Welcome back to the channel, Oscar Overlander, and thanks for tuning in to check up on the progress of the habitat structure in this week. <laughs> so I have uh, finished the floor part this week, you know, um, don't worry, celebration dance is coming on the end of the video. So stay until the end and if you want to help the channel growing, please leave me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed, please push the subscribe button below the video right there. Um, it would be much appreciated. Um, if you need some more time for that, I will wait quick, okay? And as usual, questions from the last video, I will answer them uh, on the end of this video. The whole thing needs to go a quarter inch, six millimeter, this way. Now I have uh, cut 16 of those um, stiffness. Yeah, I didn't count for those. I'm kind of surprised uh, how much material those stiffeners taken up, you know. So what they are for is, just that you can envision, you know, they're coming here, they're coming in here. I weld them in here, so, so I secure the angle, basically. So what I have basically squared out this, well, this uh, flank, uh, the side part of the truck, both sides, you can see there is the the stiffeners in it, top and bottom, but I cannot put them at the bottom, uh, only the ones in the back here like that, which I continue tomorrow, you know, the 12 inch ones, uh, because here in that area will be the garage door. So now I'm welding this at the top and so that I don't just weld at the top because I can't get to the bottom to weld, you know, so I'm not relying only on this welding bead at the top. That's why I drilled these holes every foot, you know, and I, I bake them on there as well. So I have a better hold on the L angle. So, and this angle, one by one, is the last one which goes in here on the floor part. So these are the uh, the four uh, floor trusses which get mounted through the arms on the outside. So basically on those four uh, dedicated arms I will have bolts going through through the arm into the stiffener plate here on the ends on the on the outside. So that's four times along the outside you know and five times along the subframe flange. So those five, you see three here and I have uh, two over there. Uh, they're painted already, but I had the attachment plates, you know, uh, further in because those five are the ones I am mounting to the subframe. Be right in this position here, right there. It's not grinded yet, so the welding bead, but basically what I do then is I, I use a an angle, I just took a one of my alum, aluminum angles, just to explain. You see, I put them on there, right? And then there will be a hole. Oh, I wish I had three hands. So now there will be a hole in here where my thumb is, goes all the way through and I stick a bolt through because I can, I can reach in there and stick a bolt through there out here and then a nut, a self-locking nut here. And here on the flange of the uh, subframe, I drill two holes and uh, cut a thread because that's a six millimeter uh, wall, the subframe. So I cut a thread and then put one, two, two, two bolts in there. So, well, you can see how foggy it is. I welded uh, now almost five hours, three, four, four or five hours. Okay. So, but as you can see, the uh, the floor joists are in. And they are completely welded. The weld goes uh, basically around, down, for, uh, forward, and then 
that uh, closes that notch so no splash water can go through you know and not everywhere on each end you know there here I have to shorten them so here are the the parts um, of the floor assembly okay uh, so what I used as you know from the last video I used around the circumference like there yeah I used a 2 by 3 1 8 wall 50 by 75 3 millimeter and as you know as well I welded them 45 degrees in the corners okay so now what I did this week is I added a angle 1 8 2 by 2 50 by 50 millimeter 3 millimeter thick I added them at the bottom flush at the bottom to the side to the side of the the of the inside to the inside of the 2 by 3 yeah so that's what I welded so this this uh, bottom here this bottom part will carry basically the f the floor trusses I had those or brake shapes made these are 2 and 3 8 that's not really important the three two and three eighths I basically told the guy two and a half but he bent it two and three eighths that's fine but important is this height for me because that's how the uh, how tall the my insulation is the first one I have uh, two layers of insulation one and then the second above the whole uh, assembly but about the insulation we I, I will talk about that when we get to it okay so now for for now just the assembly of the of the steel so now this floor joist has been notched as you can see here you know for this angle here because I want to have them on the same elevation as you see here yeah this is on the same elevation at the bottom at the bottom here as this angle can you see it yeah here this elevation is the same height as the angle for a simple reason so I basically merged those on there and then I welded all the way this way across here up over and then down the same way as on the other side so that is basically how I welded it and most important I welded the trusses to the uh, the side part here the, the, the two by three okay so that's that's how I built this you know everything I used here is an eighth thick or three millimeter thick and then also when the, this is now all done, as you as you see, um, I will add from one floor truss to the other. I will add a three millimeter uh, aluminum, like a pretty stable aluminum that but which, which builds the the bottom part of the whole habitat, right? So and that will be glued on into these. First, I have to uh, clean up these welding beads a little bit flat, and then I will glue these plates in here. And then my habitat is completely closed. Speaking of closed, uh, those uh, welding beads along the angle, all the way around, I welded all the way around, you know, um, just a small bead, not, not to heat this uh, um, profile up too much, but it is closed, so I don't have to silicone it or anything. It is basically fish tanked, you know, and it, 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 there's no splash water from the underneath coming up or through possible under pressure in the habitat to get sucked up or something into the insulation that's what I want to avoid the bottom structure is done so I started welding the the, the habitat basically around Christmas so Christmas, did one day before Christmas, I started, you know, cutting stuff and then uh, I welded on the 25th, 26th, something like that, I started. But then I was always crawling on the ground, you know, like uh, to weld those uh, um, 45s together and stuff like that. And when, you, when you're on the ground, I don't know, I, ha I have a problem with, with my welding masks, you know, like they're always falling off the head. And uh, because it was falling off all the time, the welding mask, uh, I left it away and welded without. So, of course, I'm not watching into the to the light, but um, I'm closed the eyes and tuck welded it and so on and so on. And 
uh, of course, it came like it had to be. You know, I burned my face pretty good. And uh, at New Year's Eve or New Year, I looked like this. So is it just my head shape or is it many hairs? So I don't know what it is. Or it's just simply a, a bad mask, you know. For, for the time being, like for the build, I bought myself this mask here, extra. You know, brand new. But this thing sucks badly, you know, because the battery was empty. There's a little battery in it, must be, you know, uh, was empty after four months right away. And then I thought this here give me extra, hold, you know, hold on the back of the head. But this is so shallow, this whole thing. It, it, it's always falling off, so I don't use this thing at all anymore. And, you know, and then I used my old one which is pretty blind already, you know, because I have it for a few years, but this has no battery. It has a solar in there, you know, and, and recharges basically the, uh, himself. And it has a simple thing, but also this is falling off the head. So yeah, uh, maybe you guys can uh, recommend something, you know, like the guys, they weld a lot, you know, you know, maybe a better brand or something, you know, please put it in the subscriptions, you know, like uh, I, I have to buy a new one. You know, I'm in the market for it. I looked the other day uh, and I saw some of them, they are in blisters, you know, like completely, you can't put them on, you can't try them. So I'm not buying anything what I can't try because I have already two and none hold on my head, you know. So if you know a good, a good welding mask, uh, please let me know in the subscriptions below the video. You know, it would be much appreciated. Backbeat Pet had a question. What are the overall dimensions of the box build and have you established an overall weight for the completed box? The uh, overall dimensions are in width. They are 2470 millimeter, which equals um, 97 and a quarter inch. Yeah, just a tiny bit, an inch over eight feet, you know. And then at the bottom, as you know, I have a, a little jog at the, at the back, right, of the, of the habitat. So at the bottom, I have 16.2 feet, and at the top, is it 18.2 feet? So that's uh, that's what I have in millimeter. At the bottom, is it 4,979 to be exact? So basically five meter. And at the top, is it 5,555 to be exact? Okay, so five and a half meter. In case of the weight, there will be a lot of people. They say, oh, whoa, yeah. But here's the thing, um, I will tell you in a moment what, what this all, what the overall, not the overall weight is, but the, the most of the stuff weighs, okay? But I want to tell you one thing um, ahead of time, and that is, um, when I took the utility box off, I will link that video up in the corner. Um, when I took the utility box off and I drove the truck back home, you know, like the truck was almost undrivable. It was bouncing and, 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 and hammering at the back, you know, like it, it, you could not drive that truck. You know, every little pothole, you know, like you jumped and that, yeah. So that means basically I need weight. I need weight to have this truck and their suspension properly working, right? So therefore, uh, the empty, the dry weight of the truck, just the, the driving cap, the chassis himself is about six ton. You know, but we shortened the, the driving cab and uh, that's below six tons or let's say it's 5.7 ton, something like that. So now I did the math on the, on the subframe himself and that is 412 kilogram, yeah, which equals 910 pounds. But that's before zinking, like galvanizing, okay? So maybe on the end it's a half a ton, you know, it's uh, close to, uh, let's say, uh, 1,000 pounds, okay? That's the subframe, half a ton. Now, this habitat structure, you know, as you saw, so far you saw it last week, it was 290 kilogram, okay? But now on the end, I did the math, uh, went through all this, you know. Uh, the structure himself, when, when the bone structure is basically done, you know, that's 470 kilogram. The insulation is about 100 kilogram. All the plywood, that's the most heaviest part, that's 550 kilogram. That's way over 1,000 pounds of plywood. And then the aluminum, the cladding on the outside, 
There is a 16.1 kilogram per sheet. So I estimated a full sheet, but I will cut something off, you know, like, but we talk here a few grams here and there, you know, so that's 290 kilogram. All together is 1,410 kilogram, yeah, one and a half ton. So 3,110 pounds, okay? Without the windows, without door, without skylight, you know, and without all the build outs, basically, water tanks and refrigerator, you name it. Okay, so roughly, I mean, I can't tell you now what the end weight will be because I don't have all the items. I can tell you what the, the, the individual weight of everything is, you know, like the refrigerator, for example. But if I get to two ton or maybe slightly above two ton, yeah, who cares? You know, it's a, it's, it's, it is a 12 ton chassis. So six ton dry weight below, yeah, and then two ton added, I'm at eight. So then half a ton of water, 600 kilo or half a ton of diesel, that's a ton to it, nine ton. So if I, if I stay below 10 ton or around 10 ton, I'm totally happy. And I think that's what the truck needs to proper or work properly. Now this is this uh, for this week. Next week I will, if I get to it, you know, I will show you um, the progress on the walls basically. I want to I want to start with this wall first basically with the passenger side wall I have done the math where the stud need to be the studs panorama window and the shower window the bedroom window I have this figured out where this need to be um, but I'm not sure I will have so much time this week because I have finally an appointment for the the uh, subframe drop off at the galvanizer so on the weekend tomorrow Saturday we will take off the uh, the subframe, I got six guys here to help me, you know, um, I might let the camera run um, and show you that, you know, load it onto a trailer and then bring it down to the galvanizer. 